my name is Sarah. I'm Paula. And I'm Angelina. And this is our presentation comparing the Woodcock Mignon's language survey with the oral and written language scales. And so our presentation is going to be talking about what each test is assessing, their similarities, their differences, how they're both useful for ELs, and also we're going to be discussing our EVP articles and our interviews that we conducted to help us understand each assessment a little bit better. And now Paula's going to go over the KWL chart with you guys. All right, so we began this project by knowing very little about both assigned assessments. We knew that the OWLS was an assessment that could be used to look at oral and written language, and we knew that the Woodcock Munoz could be used, um, could be administered in English and in Spanish. What we wanted to know was when it would be appropriate to use each assessment, and what information does each assessment provide. What we learned was that the Woodcock Munoz assesses academic language proficiency in ELs, and that the OWLS is used to identify a language disorder in English only. Furthermore, we learned that the OWLS was not normed on ELs. Now I'll be discussing the Woodcock Munoz. It's a norm reference set of individually administered tests that provide a broad sampling of academic language proficiency in the areas of listening, speaking, reading, writing, and comprehension for ages 3 to 22. There are eight separate tests that look at analogies, oral comprehension, picture vocabulary, letter word identification, oral language expression, passage comprehension, dictation, and written language expression. There are two tests for each section. The first one looks at basic and foundational skills, and the second one looks at skill application and functional skills. This assessment provides qualitative information about an individual's language proficiency level and instructional zone in English and in Spanish. Furthermore, it can be used to evaluate the effectiveness of language programs such as ESOL and help determine eligibility for EL services. It can also be used as part of a dyslexia evaluation for English learners and it requires the examiner to have a good command of Spanish and English. Furthermore, the results represent and predict the client's readiness for classroom instruction and content subject classrooms, and a score at or above the proficient level suggests that the examinee will be capable of managing the language demands in an English-only classroom. Now Angelina is going to be presenting on the OWLS. Okay, so the OWLS 2 is a set of four scales that collectively provide a comprehensive assessment of language. The scales are listening comprehension, oral expression, reading comprehension, and written expression. Together, the scales assess oral language skills for ages 3 to 21 and written language skills for ages 5 to 21. Each scale assesses the following four areas equally, lexical semantic, syntactic, Superlinguistic and pragmatic. The OWLS 2 identifies students with learning disabilities, language disorders, and related difficulties in accordance with IDEA requirements. And now Jenny's going to talk to you about the similarities between the two assessments. Okay, so as well as differences, uh, these tests also have some similarities. They both measure and identify characteristics of language. The Woodcock Munoz measures language proficiency and the OWLS measures um, language and if the client has a language disorder. And they both measure listening, reading, writing, speaking, and oral expression. They also both predict academic difficulties and can be used to monitor progress with the client. They both are norm referenced and they also both have an online scoring system. And now Paula is going to be discussing more about the Woodcock Munoz with you guys. All right, so I will be discussing the differences between the English and the Spanish protocols in the Woodcock Blue News. As you can see, these are two items from each protocol. However, the questions and the items are not the same. As you can see up here, these two pictures are representative of the clusters. So two, um, a couple different subtests make up one cluster, and then one cluster gives you a specific score pertaining to that language area. So for this one, this is analogies, and in question number four in Spanish, it says, el agua es para beber y una galleta es para comer, which basically is saying, you drink water and you eat a cookie. Now, question number four in English says, you eat with a spoon and you cut with a knife. 
as you can see, these two are different questions, but it's okay because um, they both represent the same language construct. Um, both English and the Spanish protocols assess each specific area using the different items that are culturally relevant and current and that represent contemporary, a, a contemporary understanding of the measurements of listening, reading, and writing constructs. Furthermore, it's important to note that 25 to 35% of the items were a direct translation of the English protocol. A few important notes regarding scoring. Um, SLPs really want to pay close attention to the relative proficiency index score because it predicts quality of performance on similar tasks. The instructional zone because it identifies which tasks were difficult or easy for the client. The language proficiency levels because it represents a progression of the second language learning and the comparative language index which uses the Spanish and the English scores to compare and contrast which language is stronger and to compare age and grade level. Now I'm gonna discuss the usefulness for English language learners using the Woodcock Munoz language survey. First of all, it assesses English and Spanish and bilingual individuals. It informs the SLPs of the language proficiency level. It helps determine eligibility for bilingual education and ESL services and it helps determine the readiness for English instruction. Additionally, administration of the English and Spanish can be used to compare and contrast the individual strengths and weaknesses across all language domains. Now, Sarah's gonna discuss the OWLs. So the OWLs can be used to determine if an EL has a language disorder in English, and it also can be used to get an um, indication of how a client is gonna perform language in English. It also can be used as part of a dynamic assessment, which could include a language sample and a full battery of Spanish assessments, so the clinician can compare their performance in English and in Spanish. And it also can give clinician an idea of their reading and writing skills in English, um, which can help them with their overall assessment. And down here is a little screenshot we have from the OWLs, and over here are the four scales, and in the middle part right here it talks about the um, process of, administ of administering each scale and over here it talks about the item format for each scale. And now Angelina is going to be talking about the EVP for both assessments. Okay, so there is no research out there on the new version of the Woodcock Munoz, so I chose an article that is on the revised version of the Woodcock Munoz. And this study focused on bilingual children's performance on the English and Spanish versions. Um, they used Spanish speakers of the Cuban, Puerto Rican, and Mexican subcultures. They found that the Spanish version functions equally across all subcultures. But the English one, there's actually a bias for the Mexican subculture. So they concluded that the Spanish version is appropriate for young bilingual students living in the United States who are of those three subcultures. Um, the article for the OWLs I chose is, um, it's not about the OWLs because there's no research on the OWLs being used for ELs. So this one focuses on things that the OWLs would address. Um, so this one assesses the identification accuracy of dynamic assessment of narrative ability in English for ELs. And they found that a dynamic assessment conducted in English is clinically useful procedure for identifying language impairments in bilingual children who are in the process of learning English as a second language. So now Sarah is going to talk to you about the handout. So this is our handout that we made that talks about both assessments and it compares them and talks about how they're useful for English learners. Um, so over here it talks about the different subtests for the Woodcock Munoz, and then down here are the different scales for the owls. And then right here in the middle we have their similarities and their differences, and on either side we have how they're both um, appropriate in the assessment of English learners. And in addition to creating a handout, we also conducted two interviews with SLPs about both assessments. So in addition to the handout, we also conducted two interviews with two SLPs who have administered both assessments with ELs. We talked to Ms. Knox about the OWLs and Ms. Galan, who's an SLP in the school system, about the Woodcock Minos. 
and they both had positive impressions about the assessments and gave us information on both. In my interview with Ms. Galan about the Woodcock Munoz, she said that to effectively administer it, the clinician must speak Spanish in order to understand and know the different dialect nuances that each um, client could have. And her favorite part about the assessment is the analogies, because it shows if a client can use context clues to decipher the word meaning. And she also said that this assessment is effective in assessing a bilingual client to test English proficiency, but it could be more useful if it had a language sample included. And it also can be administered to any stage of bilingual, whether that be uh, beginning, intermediate, or advanced. And when I interviewed Ms. Knox, she said that the OWLS assessment could not be used to measure English language proficiency, but it could be used to get a picture of their language skills in, in English only. And in order to use the OWLS in assessing an EL client, she said it would need a language sample in English and would need a full battery of Spanish assessments to use as a comparison. And something she liked about the assessment is how it has reading and writing components and it reveals comprehensive and expressive information. They both concurred the interviews by stating they would use both assessments again in the future with an EL client. And so these are our references that we used for our presentation and we hope you enjoyed it.